In our last video, we created an awesome floating bed for my son, but it still needed a headboard. So for this video, we're gonna create an awesome headboard that's still easy to assemble. Let's begin. Now, if we look at the back of most headboards, there's a column that runs nearly from the top to nearly to the bottom to give it a bunch of strength and keep it rigid so as people lean on it, it doesn't break. And since we know teenagers are rough on stuff, I'm gonna use a two by four, which I hope will give it plenty of strength. And to keep everything as even as possible, I'm gonna cut them both at the same time. Now when it comes to the backboard, a lot of times it's one solid piece, but in my case, I'm gonna make it a little bit different. And since I have two separate pieces here, I wanna square them up. So I'm gonna create a couple cross beams that go across between the two to make sure they stay nice and sturdy. And to keep these cross beams easy to assemble, I'm just gonna use some pocket screws. I'm now gonna assemble the braces on the main beams. Now keep in mind that all of this is gonna be hidden by the front of the backboard and by the bed, so none of this should be seen, so you don't have to worry about these boards being overly pretty. Now for this bottom brace, I want it 15 inches. That was my choice. As long as you put it somewhere here on the lower side, it'll be covered by the base, so you don't have to worry about it being seen. Now for this top brace, I had to be a little bit more exact. So I came down 10 and a half inches. And the reason why is I plan on having a bookshelf across the top of this. Now if you're planning on making a similar backboard but without the shelf, just nice and flat, then the top one is not critical either. Now if you wanted to keep this super simple, you could get some plywood, measure everything, cut your plywood to size and secure it to your bracing and then attach it to your bed. But I want to do a little bit different. I want to take some 1x4s and have them going horizontal across the bed, sit one on top of each other so it looks more like a slat wall. Now here's a little money saving tip if you plan on using the 1x4s. This is actually a 1x4 furring strip. They're usually a little bit less expensive, but you do have to search through the pile a little bit harder to find the straight ones, so just keep that in mind. Next, I laid out all the boards that I'm gonna be using because I wanna find the ones with the best sides and the best lengths because I wanna use that on the main part of the backboard so it minimizes all the sanding I'm gonna have to do. I've then brought the wood over to the miter saw so we can trim it down to the appropriate length. If you're truly interested in this exact build, I'll put a cut list at the very end of the video. I cut down a total of six pieces. Here's five at the bottom and I have one at the top. And I have that space so we can have that shelf right here in the middle. And to do that, I've cut some additional pieces that'll be spaced out and leave that opening right there in the middle. Now it's time to start joining all these pieces together. And there's a couple different ways I could do this. I could probably glue it together, but to keep everything in alignment, I'd probably have to have a biscuit joiner, and I believe I'd just get complicated. So I believe the easiest way to do this would probably just be some pocket screws. So that means we're gonna need two pocket screws going off to the end of each board so it connects onto the nice trim board I'm gonna have on the end, plus three or four screws going between each board. So I flipped all the pieces over and I made a couple marks six inches in. We're gonna draw a line and that'll allow me to know exactly where I need to put all those pocket holes to keep them all sandwiched together. Now as we're drilling for the pocket holes, we gotta remember this is a little bit lower quality wood. So if we have any knots, for example, right here is a knot and I was originally going to put a pocket screw right where that's gonna go, we probably need to avoid that since we don't want that to bust out. So I'm gonna move it over about an inch and drill the pocket hole there. And that way we shouldn't have to worry about those busting out. Now I've placed the boards on my workbench here face down and that way I can screw all of them together making sure the face of them are flat. I'm also making sure all of them are in alignment on the sides as well. And to help prevent them moving around while I screw them together, I just added a couple quick clamps. Let me pick this up to show you what it looks like. There you go. Now it's time for staining. Now for this part of the headboard, I'm going to be staining it a charred wood stain. This is the same color I used on the bed, so it should match up nicely. Now that I have the front of the headboard in place, measured out, make sure it is nice and aligned with this back frame, I'm going to put a screw through each of the boards into the frame. And that way it just holds everything in place and I don't have to worry about it moving around. And since these are furring strips, I'm going to pre-drill all the holes to hopefully prevent cracking. And it's finally starting to take the shape of a headboard. Now for this headboard, my son actually requested a place to put some books. I mean, can you believe it in this time he actually wants books and not something just digital? So heck yeah, I'm gonna build a bookshelf. So let me measure this out and I can cut the first layer and we'll go from there. Now you're just using one of these shelves for books. Well, it really isn't that wide enough for a book, 
But if I take two of these and join them together, then it should be just right. Now I'm actually gonna take these, rip them down on a table saw to probably about three inches a piece, and that'll allow me to join them together really nicely so it'll be nice and flat. With the shelf done, it slides nicely into place and gives it a good ledge to put the books on. But these sides look kind of rough. So I decided to make a couple similar side pieces here. The same design as this main shelf. And once everything's in place, I think that'll look really good. And to hold the sides onto the base, I again, just use some pocket screws. Now when I install this shelf, I'm gonna leave it sticking out probably about a quarter of an inch. That'll cover up all these rough edges Plus, I think it'll just frame it up and make it look a little bit better. But the back is a little bit more tricky because there's not much support on the back for the shelf. So I'm going to take some 2x4s, cut down to about 3.5 inches, and I believe I'm going to attach it to the cross brace under here just to give a little support to the back on each side, and that should keep it nice and sturdy. Now before I install the shelf in place, I actually want to stain it a Roanoke color. This right here is very similar to what he has in some of his other furniture, plus once the shelf is in place, that two-tone I think will look really good. While that shelf is drying, I'm going to create a little ledge that goes around the top and the sides of this headboard, and that will kind of frame everything in. I believe it will just make it stand out just a little bit nicer. Now I've cut out the sides first, that way I can attach them and get a true measurement across the top so I only have to cut that piece once. But first I want to stain them the same color as the shelf. Since I want the shelf to stick out just a little bit from the headboard, I want the outer trim to do that as well so everything will be nice and uniform. An easiest way for me to do that is to take some quarter inch plywood, set it on my table, flip the headboard on it, and that way I can make sure that the trim is quarter inch all the way around. Now if you look along the edge of these boards, you'll notice I have two pocket holes for each of these boards. Now of course, you don't have to have that many. I just wanted to give extra strength to that outer frame and to help reduce wood movement. If you ever had one of those moments, you're right at the end of a project, you realize, oops, I forgot to do something. Let me show you. To attach the top trim piece, I have some pocket screws for the top, but I completely forgot to put one here on the side. Fortunately, I have a jig that will allow me to put pocket screws in tight locations. If you don't have one of these, I'll put a link to that in the description. Then we're going to attach the top in the same fashion as we did the sides. Now all we have left is to install the shelf. I again spaced this up a quarter inch. We're going to slide it into place and then we'll figure out exactly where we want to attach this. And so I don't have any visible screws on the top of the shelf. I believe I'm gonna add a pocket screw here on the support and a pocket screw here, right here on the frame. And that should hold it nice and tight. And now for the moment of truth. In fact, I haven't even looked at this yet. You'll be the first one to see it. Here is a close up. The two-tone definitely stands out, but it's not overwhelming. I really like it. Tell me what you think about it in the comments. And for those of you who waited, here is the cut list. You may have to modify it depending on your bed size, but there you go. Now to attach this headboard to the frame, I'm going to be using some 4 inch bolts. And to do that, I'm going to have to drill some holes down here in the legs. Now your hole positioning might vary a little bit, but mine is at 3.5 from the bottom and at 12 from the bottom. I'm also going to use a drill guide to make sure I have the holes as straight as possible, but you don't have to have one of these. Now the headboard is basically finished, other than a top coat. It needs some kind of protectant to keep oils from your hands and your bodies from discoloring it. So some kind of maybe polyurethane or just something to go on top of it would be the next step. But before I do that, I want to actually take it to the bedroom and see what it looks like. So I had to kick my son out of his room for a few minutes so I can get this installed. So let's do it quick. First things first is I got to get this mattress out of the way, so let me flip it up. And let's pull it out a little bit so we have some room. And there we go, in place. That looks pretty good. Now let's turn some LEDs on so you can really get the idea of what it looks like. That is cool. Now, at some point, we're probably going to put some LEDs behind the headrest to make it look even better. But that looks great. Here's one more close-up of the headrest. I really think that looks awesome. Please, let me know your thoughts about it in the comments. I'd love to hear them. 
Now if you enjoyed this headboard being built, you'll probably love this next video.